Well, Megan, I've been wearing Vionic shoes for over three years now, but this month, my trusted shoe brand and I entered a new phase of our relationship, international travel. Well, Sarah, that is a serious commitment, (laughs) right? You can't just pack any shoe for a trip abroad. It's got to be stylish enough for those major cosmopolitan cities. It's got to be sturdy enough for trains, planes, buses, and city streets. And obviously, it's got to be comfortable enough to support your feet over many, many miles of walking. Well, no surprise, my Vionics were up to the task. I had two pair with me, a pair of casual sneakers in a cool gray color, and then a weatherproof suede ankle boot that I swear still looks brand new after 10 days on soggy sidewalks. Megan, the only time my feet hurt the entire trip was New Year's Eve when I made the mistake of wearing a pair of booties not from Vionic. So I'll just leave that data right here for you. Okay, well, that's pretty conclusive, Sarah. Vionic has the best curated styles to get you ready for whatever 2024 has in store, whether it's jet setting like Sarah or keeping up with busy mom life on this side of the pond. They even offer a 30 day guarantee, wear them, love them or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. Use code the mom hour 15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's a one time use only. Bionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Hey everyone, Sarah here. As you listen to our episodes recorded during the 2020 global pandemic, just a friendly reminder to check the date stamp on when that episode was released. And we'll also always tell you when it was recorded as well in the show notes and in the episode itself. Things change so quickly these days, including recommendations for health and safety, as well as just our own thoughts and feelings. So you may hear things that feel a bit dated if you're catching up on older episodes. Just know that we're experiencing this in real time, just like you, and that we're working really hard to follow the latest recommendations for the safety of our families and our communities. We're also working hard to bring you timely, relevant podcast episodes in a world that's changing really quickly. So just a reminder to listen with that context. Thanks for being here, friends. On to the episode. Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm Megan. We're two moms with eight kids between us, from little to grown. We're in different areas of the country and in different stages of life. But we both know that motherhood's a lot easier when real moms share tips and encouragement. And remind you that it's really all going to be okay. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Mom Hour. I'm Sarah Powers, welcoming you to the month of May today, and also to our Voices interview for this month. If you are new around here, Megan and I actually take turns in the interviewer chair, and each month we share one conversation with someone we think you'll love and can learn from and be inspired by. I am so excited for this one, and I want to bring you all behind the scenes just a little bit here before I tell you about our guest. So since my family has been staying at home for the last seven weeks or so, I've moved my podcast recording upstairs. I used to record at my kitchen table with these sound buffering curtains hung on a window behind me. And now I'm up in our master bedroom sitting on my bed because, you know, I am never home alone anymore, just like all of you. So anyway, Megan and I have both made some adjustments and we're recording as much as ever. And our amazing sound engineer, Brian from Yokai Audio, makes it all sound great. So hopefully you all haven't noticed much difference, but it is different and it does affect the time of day we can record. And who else can be using streaming internet in our houses so that it doesn't interrupt our bandwidth and all kinds of things like that. I think you all know what I mean when I say it's like a regular part of my job to do these recordings, but even the regular stuff just feels harder these days. So when it was my turn to choose a guest for this month's Voices episode, I just kind of wanted to talk with somebody I already felt comfortable with. Somebody who would understand weird recording schedules and somebody that would feel like just a casual conversation with a friend. I do love interviewing authors and experts, but this month I just wanted something like cozier. I mean, I am in my bed and there's unfolded laundry all around me. On April 27th, seven weeks into a global crisis, my husband is playing with the kids outside and then he's going to put them to bed. And I am about to get on the line with my good friend, Ashley Gad. I know many of you already know and love Ashley, but if you're not familiar, she is the founder of Coffee and Crumbs which is a blog and community and podcast for mothers of young children. 
She is a writer and photographer and community leader, and she's also a mom of three little kids. And Ashley and I are Voxer buddies, so we use the Voxer app to leave each other these long voicemails about all kinds of things, motherhood, business, running a podcasting business, and other things. And so I have gotten to know her over the last few years, and she's just the best. She's incredibly talented and an unbelievably hard worker. She cares so much about the Coffee and Crumbs community, and I really admire her for that. She's also just a very honest voice about the struggles and pain that come with motherhood, as well as the sweet parts. So if you're already a huge fan, hopefully this will be fun for you to hear Ashley and me kind of mash up Coffee and Crumbs and the Mom Hour. And if you're not familiar with Ashley and her work, I know you're going to love her. Okay, everyone, happy month of May. Happy Friday. And let's get to my conversation with Ashley Gadd of Coffee and Crumbs. Hello, Ashley. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hi, friend. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited. It's just like one of our Voxer conversations. Only a few more people are listening. (laughs) That's exactly (laughs) right. So for those who don't know you and Coffee and Crumbs, just briefly tell everybody where you live and how many kids you have and how old they are and um, what you do there. Sure. So my name is Ashley Gadd. I live in Sacramento, California. And I have three kiddos. My oldest is almost eight. He has a birthday coming up here in a couple of weeks. My middle is five and my little baby girl is 15 months, which I'm not really one of those moms that counts the months, but she had her 15 month doctor appointment this morning. So I feel the need to clarify. That's exactly how I know how old she is. I feel like after about 16, it drops mm-hmm. off because then you mm-hmm. can round up to say a year and a half and then yes. it just, yeah. So I normally not, just say she's one, but yeah. I forgot they have a 15 month checkup, which seems kind of random. So I don't know. <laughs> I have a Sacramento question, just a legit oh. question. Is it like a city with suburbs around? I just have not. I'm a Californian, yes. but I haven't spent a lot of time there. So is it like kind of a sprawl? Are you in like a suburb or is it yeah. are you in the city? Yeah. So the we have a kind of a downtown and a midtown situation. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lot of pockets of suburban areas in the actual city of Sacramento. And then the actual city of Sacramento is also surrounded by kind of suburb cities, if that makes sense, who would probably identify as living in Sacramento. The greater area, the greater Sacramento. And I live in a pocket of Sacramento. Okay. Nice. Yeah. I have driven through many times and I think been there once, but I don't have a good sense for it as a city. And as a Californian, I feel um, almost more connected to my state government lately. I don't know if you feel that way. So I was just curious. Yes. Well, if you ever, you know, venture up here for a little weekend getaway, I have plenty of recommendations to keep you busy. And we are very well known for our food scene up here. So if you just want to eat your way through, through town, I can hook you up with some good ideas. Well, that sounds great because no one has been to a restaurant in a few weeks. I know, I so, know. <laughs> well, that brings oh. me to Megan and I have been sort of trying to start a lot of our episodes with just a few minutes of checking mm-hmm. in. And we always like to say what date we're recording this on because things change so quickly. We realized that like these evergreen episodes are sort of not evergreen when we're talking about the current situation. So for everybody listening, it is April 27th. And Ashley, how is life looking like in your house quarantine wise? Like, what's the mood? How's everybody doing? Maybe talk a little bit about your and your husband's work situations. Just paint mm. paint us a picture. I think mm-hmm. this is like week seven ish. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> that sounds like an eternity. Yeah. And it has felt that way as well. Yeah. So Brett actually started a brand new job on March 16th which was pretty much Mm -hmm. when everything fell apart here in California, where we we went on lockdown that week, the week that he started his new job. And interestingly enough, his job separate and apart from the shelter in place is a full-time work at home job. Okay. So the difference is we were thrust into that at the same time, all of the schools shut down. Right. So being home in our We don't have um, a tiny, tiny house, but we don't have a big house Uh and we have three bedrooms and three kids. And so our boys share room, our baby is in a separate room and then we have our room, but we don't have, you know, a home office or a den or any real set space for either one of us to work. And so I think that has been really the most challenging part of just being home with all of us, you know, Brett and I trying to get our work done and homeschool and keep the baby from hurting herself. And it's just, 
it's it's been a bit of a circus over here, but we are definitely hanging in there. You know, we have a lot to be um a lot to be grateful for. Definitely our health and our safety um you know have not been issues and so we are so grateful for yeah. that and I think probably like everyone else in the world right now we are sort of gravitating between you know deep gratitude and grief and kind of learning to hold all of those things yeah at one time and yeah. I know I've been on just kind of a wave of wave of emotion some days I feel really fine and capable and strong yeah. and other days I can hardly get out of bed and I it just I'm up and down well, I'm glad you said that because I think that's such a universal experience for moms. And yet when you have really small children, which you do, mm -hmm. their needs are kind of the same day after day. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I want to ask is what was everybody's school level before this happened? Mm -hmm. So if, if everybody were in school, you have like a first or second grader? Yeah, I have. So my oldest is in second grade okay. and he was in school almost all day from 840 to 315. Yeah. And then my preschooler was in school every day from nine to 12. Oh, that's pretty um, good. So yeah. I had, you were, you boys, were, you were getting there. I, I remember getting that. there. <laughs> yes. I, I had seen like a, a little tiny bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. And so, and my baby is still napping in the morning, praise the Lord. And yeah. so I, there before all of this shut down, that was kind of my, my mornings were pretty routine and I had time to work in the mornings. So that was kind of my, my rhythm that got interrupted. And so we also had childcare at that point, which we oh, no longer wow. have. Yeah. So I had a babysitter come to the house two days a week. I had about nine hours of childcare a week, four and a half hours on two different days. And that also has gone away. So right. yeah. um, it's just, it's been a lot of adjusting. A lot of adjusting. For sure. <laughs> and for those who don't know, maybe just briefly talk about what coffee and crumbs is or what and what your work is when you say you're mm. working um what what did that look like before um and and just yeah maybe talk a little bit about coffee and crumbs yeah so i oh gosh i'm really bad at the elevator pitch for coffee it doesn't and crumbs. have to i be need elevator. to work on that <laughs> keep in mind that probably 70 percent of our listeners um know and love you already but I, for the oh. other 30 percent <laughs> oh, those other 30% are in for a real treat here yeah. as I stumble over my words. Um, no, Coffee and Crumbs is, it's a website that I started in 2014. It's, it began as a collaborative blog about motherhood. And since then, we have grown a bit. We started a podcast. We wrote a book together. And we also have an online community for women who want to pursue creativity alongside motherhood called that was, exhale that was an excellent elevator thank speech. you yeah so it's 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 a lot of different kind of arms and branches but coffee and crumbs is essentially an online community for mothers yeah and I run that from my home out of my sweatpants with my three young children yep <laughs> and your background I mean you're you're a beautiful photographer and a beautiful writer oh, so I mean you. I just know that from knowing you so those two things come together and I would imagine your day-to-day -day work also involves leading your team of writers and, yes. you know, putting content together and mm -hmm. all of that good stuff. So, yeah, yeah. well, content, um, the need for content is as much as ever, I think right now. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And like you, Megan and I are, we've always worked remotely in our homes. So mm -hmm. weirdly, that is the same. It's the mm -hmm. other people in our houses. Yes. Yes. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, very much so. And if you were used to getting alone time or used to having mm -hmm. that childcare, that is a big shift. And I just mm -hmm. want to, you know, validate that toddlers, the, at least on this show, Megan and I have talked many times, the year between one and two is just hard with oh toddlers. Goodness. It's harder than babies, in my opinion. I mean, and it's, it's, just very physically demanding mm -hmm. and exhausting. It's and just, it's, it's the difference between needing to be on mm -hmm. all of the time when they are awake yeah. versus not. Yeah. Because when you have a baby, granted, if you have a really fussy baby, maybe that's a different situation. Sure. But for just an average baby that cannot crawl and is not mobile and cannot walk, you can just put them in the swing, the yeah. bumbo, the whatever, put them on the floor Wear on a them. blanket and yeah. they're, yeah. They're, they're relatively fine. And we're now at the phase where, I mean, our joke is that Presley's just life song is wrecking ball oh, because yeah. she just yeah. goes from room to room to room, just tearing everything apart is yeah. all she does all day long. Just empties out anything she can get her yeah. little paws on. Yep. She just causes 
wreck. She just leaves a trail of wreckage all over the house just all day. That is all she does. Well, and that's, so, we called Violet Homewrecker for that same. So I had mm-hmm. a, I had the same, same and third baby. Um, and when you have older kids, they have, and yours are even a little more spread out than mine, but they have like possessions and Lego yes, builds and yes. schoolwork and things that, you know, it's not just your own stuff that needs to be childproofed mm-hmm. and wreck proofed, but um, siblings. And that is just exhausting. So all I, of it. It I is just been there. constantly just walking around, picking up just like <laughs> trails and trails and trails of random things <laughs> that I didn't even know she could reach or get into, right. but somehow she has. She, like Presley she was is, here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Leaving her, leaving her signature. I love uh. it. Sarah, you know, when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies, but having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product the algorithm sends my way. You know what's not too good to be true, though? Our sponsor, Ritual, and their clinically backed Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh minty essence in every bottle. So you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. We are welcoming back Dr. Mom Butt Balm as a sponsor today. And Megan, I guess you must be back to changing diapers again, right? Now that you have a step grandbaby in the mix. I have changed a few lately, Sarah. And yeah, it really takes me back to that memory from early motherhood. I actually always enjoyed diaper changes unless they were the really gross toddler ones or if there was diaper rash involved. Oh my gosh, yes. I remember being so stressed out, like gearing up for the saddest diaper change ever. Your baby knows it's going to hurt. You know they're going to cry. It is just the worst. And having to use goopy, gross diaper rash cream definitely didn't help. Dr. Mom Butt Balm was developed by a mom who's also a doctor when she couldn't find any traditional products that worked for her baby's persistent diaper rash. This pediatrician-approved formula is made with all quality ingredients and no artificial dyes or preservatives. And since it's easy to remove, you won't have to wipe and wipe to get it off of your baby's skin. That is so important, especially if they're already a little chafed. And I love the way this formula feels. A little goes a long way. Don't let diaper rash come between you and your baby. Shop for Dr. Mom Butt Balm online at Amazon or Walmart today. Okay, Ashley, we're back. And I want to talk about social media a little bit because, um, first of all, I love following you on Instagram. And oh, thank you. Um, I just think you put a lot of beautiful thoughts and beautiful images out in the world. And I know you are very intentional about that. But you also take very um, public and very intentional breaks from social media. So maybe I would love to talk about that, especially in this time we're living through right now, because Mm -hmm. everybody needs, we need our virtual friends. We need Mm -hmm. our, that's all we have right now. We don't have in person and yet it can still kind of get to that yucky place where it just doesn't feel so good or it feels Mm -hmm. like it's not, um, it's not contributing to our well being. And Megan and I have talked about that many times on this show, that kind of just gross feeling you get after a while. And Mm -hmm. and I'm not throwing Instagram under the bus because there's other it could be Pinterest for some people or Facebook or whatever. But maybe just talk about um, the breaks you take and how you came to that and what that feels like. And I'll jump in if I have more questions. Yeah, I don't even know if there was really a set. No, actually, that's a lie. Sorry, I'm, pro- <laughs> I'm, I'm literally processing this out loud with you right I love now. It. Um, I did hit a breaking point with social media and it was around the same time that I was walking through um, a little bit of postpartum depression mm-hmm. after my third baby was born. So this was last year. And I think that was the first time I had really full-blown deleted Instagram from my phone for a solid month. Okay. I just needed like a full clean break. I think that was the first time I did it. I'm not hundred percent sure, but that's in my memory. That mm-hmm. was kind of one of the first really substantial breaks that I took. And 
it felt so good, I decided to start doing it more often. So I take a couple of breaks. I don't know. I've done it maybe three times now where I just completely delete the app from my phone for 30 days. I have really terrible self-control if I try to do (laughs) like other types of limits. You know, I have screen time limits and I have other boundaries in place for just my ongoing 365 days a year life. But I find that I actually feel the benefits of taking a break the most intensely and the most substantially if I take a break for a month and fully delete it from my phone. Well, I love that it's a month because that is long enough to go through some real withdrawals and yes. some real like <laughs> reckoning because you have like the phantom like reach mm-hmm. for the button. Mm-hmm. Um, how like how do you know when it's time? You said the first time was kind of brought about by some postpartum depression, but like yeah. what's the little voice that says uh, it's time? I mean, I don't even know other than I just kind of feel it in my gut. Yeah. Like I, I've been looking to this thing. It's usually a combination of things of when I go on here, I don't feel good. Mm-hmm. I just don't feel good in my soul. I don't feel good in my heart. I don't feel good in my body looking at what I'm looking at. Mm-hmm. And it's a combination of that with I am looking to this too much to mm-hmm. validate me mm-hmm. as a person, to validate me as an artist, as a creator, as a writer, as a whatever. And I need to separate my worth from this app and these yeah. squares. And I, t- I just know, I know when it's time to do that. Um, and I think that accepting that mm-hmm. <laughs> and really being obedient to it is the trickiest yeah. part. It's not even the knowing, it's the actually doing it yeah. that is the hard part. So yeah. Do you find when you take those breaks that your um creative we're gonna talk more about creativity in a bit, but that you are you still wanting to take photographs or to write and have it be somewhere else? Or does it almost feel like I mean I have truthfully I have had that feeling like why would I edit this beautiful photo if I'm not going to put I'm not going to put it up there and you know get people to like it? Like it, so do you yes. find that your cre- your actual um your creative output changes yes. um, without that audience? You know what it is? I almost feel like when I'm on a real significant break from social media, I am still creating. And if anything, I have a lot more creative energy simply because I have more time and mm-hmm. I have more space in my brain because I'm not letting my mind fill up with the lives of other people mm-hmm. and the details mm-hmm. of what oh, you know, really they had for breakfast. That. Yeah. So if I, if I silence kind of that distraction, I do find that I have more creative energy, but to your point, I think the thing that kind of goes away is my constant assessing of how to package uh, my yeah. life, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, in some ways, like that really is what social media is. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's a it's a purposeful, mm-hmm. <laughs> curated collection of what we have decided to put out into the world. And yeah. so I think that when I just don't have it, I definitely am taking less photos. I think I'm t- I'm taking less photos of things that I would be trying to package. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think in some ways, the stuff that I'm creating during that time is maybe even a little bit more true Mm -hmm. to me and true to things I actually really care about and really want to remember for myself and not for anybody else. Right. And what does it feel like when you come back? I'm, I'm curious about this. I have taken a couple breaks, but it's been Mm -hmm. a couple of years since I took a big break after the 2016 presidential election. And that Mm -hmm. was a little more news driven, but I I Mm -hmm. took a break from everything, even Instagram. And that's not a news platform, but that's probably the last time um, I'm, and I remember when I came back, it was a relatively pleasant experience, actually, mm-hmm. maybe because I had detoxed and it was I was then allowing something back in. So what has mm-hmm. it felt like when you when you come back? Yeah, it's weird because I always I get very antsy coming back. I think just it's it's almost like when you go on vacation or take a sabbatical and you don't check your email for a week or two weeks mm-hmm. or longer. And then you just know what's waiting for you on the other side. Like, I just know that when I come back, it's going to be I typically have just a lot of messages to respond yeah. to. And I feel just a little bit overwhelmed mm-hmm. dipping my toe back into that. And then there's this other weird element of I've been anonymous for a month. I think mm-hmm. that to be honest, is the part of the social media break that is truly has become really refreshing for me, Mm -hmm. especially in the last year of just being able to be anonymous for a whole month. It's like no one knows where I am and no one knows what I'm doing. And it's just kind of nice. And I really 
it sounds so dramatic, but I almost, I kind of grieve the loss of that when mm-hmm. I come back, mm-hmm. even though I want to clarify all of this with, I love Instagram. Yeah. I love my entire business is online. Mm-hmm. I am, I am a believer in online friendship and online relationships and online community. Like I am, I am the poster girl for right. that in so many ways. And yet I know that my mental health really does need to detach from that occasionally to just keep myself, I think, sound all of the yeah. rest of the time. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I answered your question, yeah. but it's no. kind of a hundred percent. It's weird. If I could just say it in one word, like it's weird when you come back, when you've mm-hmm. been gone for a while. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I actually have more experience quitting Facebook. I had an mm-hmm. interesting, an, like I accidentally quit Facebook this past year in, and that usually doesn't happen. I'm like you, uh, you know, I'm very tempted or the old habits die hard. So usually I have to be really extreme about it. And I don't have Facebook on my phone, but the browser base, you know, I'm on my computer working all day mm-hmm. and it was something like it would go like two days and I wouldn't be on. And then it would be like five days. And then at mm-hmm. one point it was two or three weeks and I, it didn't even start out as intentional. And I am like a very intentional person usually. And so I really, it was surprising, but I accidentally stopped going on Facebook and that was quite <laughs> lovely. That was that was lovely. And then Isn't it funny when yeah. you realize that so I I gave up Twitter completely maybe 3 or 4 years ago. I don't I couldn't even tell you the date. I full blown just deleted my uh-huh. account. I said goodbye. I never came back. It's I just cut it out of my life yeah. like in a second. And it's so interesting because it had been part of my part of my social media, part yeah. of my routine, part yeah. of my rhythm, part of one of the things that I check, you know, yeah. every day. Yep. And then to just have it be gone. And for me, I've never missed it. Yeah. I've never once thought, oh gosh, I really miss Twitter. Yeah. Um, it's just weird. Yeah, it it's, is. It's kind of bizarre. It is. And I, what I realized about Facebook is when I did creep back in, and a lot of times it's work, right? Like I, yeah. ha- there's a, a group that I love that's our listener community group mm-hmm. and that brings me back. And then, then sometimes with big news events like are happening now, I get sucked back in. And so I totally am back into checking Facebook. But what you realize when you've been gone is it's mostly Instagram cross posted. That's what made me feel better is like, I'm getting almost all of this now in one place. I don't need to be getting Mm -hmm. it in, in multiple places and checking multiple things. So yeah, very interesting. Well, for, for all those listening, I think it's always an interesting experiment. You don't have Mm -hmm. to be like, you know, in a really deep, dark place, or it doesn't have to be like, no. I hate this app, but um, it can always <laughs> be revealing, I think, to do a little experiment like that. Absolutely. So. And I will also say that one of the last, so I did this in January at the start of a year, which I think is a very, very good time to mm-hmm. give it up as you're just kicking off the new year and you want to start healthy habits and you just kind of want to kick yourself off. Um, in a good way. I think yeah. that January is a really, really good time. And the other month that I that I take off is in August when we are on our Coffee and Crumbs sabbatical. We take the month of August off. Every year, this will be our third year doing that. And to be able to be off work mm-hmm. and also be yeah. off Instagram is a real, real blessing. Yeah. Um, because it, we usually try to plan some special things in the month of August when I'm not working. Mm-hmm. We usually try to plan a little family trip. I probably, I don't know. I don't know if that will be able to happen this year, but even if we just go to Tahoe for a weekend last year, my mother-in-law took us to Legoland, which was so fun and such a blessing for my boys. That was like their biggest dream come true, but to just not be on social media while we were there, it was so good to just practice the art of being present in your own life and being present with your own family. And so I would just give that encouragement if anyone is thinking about doing it and you don't have to do it for a month, but if you're going on vacation for a week, I mean, consider bl- giving yourself the blessing yeah. of not being on social media when you're on vacation. Yeah, that's so true. And the other thing about January and August is the the uh, the things that other people are posting mm-hmm. um, really have the opportunity to pull you out of what's going on in your life because everyone mm-hmm. else is posting about their New Year stuff there. I've definitely had the feeling like, wait, I'm not ready to start my New Year's Totally. plan yet, but other people are. And it's like this anxious feeling or mm-hmm. August is the end of summer and back to school. Back to school. So you're, yep. you're getting sucked into all of these details of other people's lives that, mm-hmm. you know, could potentially pull you out of the, those milestone moments of your own. So mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. Um, well, I want to move into talking a little bit about creativity and making stuff. And by that, I mean, mm-hmm. photography and art and writing 
Um, But specifically in hard seasons of life, we are all collectively living through a really hard season right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm not I'm not asking you to speak for all creative women. (laughs) Actually, no pressure. Oh, gosh. (laughs) But I am genuinely curious in the last Mm. six weeks. Have you felt the urge to write more, to write less, to photograph more, to photograph less and and taking, you know, taking the sharing and the Instagram out of it for Mm -hmm. a second, but just Mm -hmm to process what we're all living through or what your feelings are in a creative way. I know for me, sometimes I kind of dry up for a while before Mm -hmm. I put something out there. I'm curious what it's felt like for you. Yeah, I, it's so interesting, this question, because I've been kind of mulling some thoughts over about this in the last few weeks as I've been really struggling to create in any capacity. I've been kind of fighting my own part of it's just apathy because Mm -hmm. all of a sudden this doesn't seem important anymore. Right. And the children in front of me seem more important and my marriage seems more important. And I have just more urgent needs right in front of my face that are requiring my attention. So part of it is that part of it is just the pure exhaustion Mm -hmm. of, of living this way for as many days as we have been doing it. And I don't have the energy at the end of the day to go sit down and write a 1500 word essay because I want to watch Netflix and eat popcorn and not think with my mind. (laughs) Um, But it's interesting because when I was in my early 20s, before I really just had a clue about a lot of stuff, (laughs) I... I remember a lot of people asking me, I had a blog at that time and I would get this question sometimes about writing and, you know, how do you write and just sort of general, how does this work for you in your life? And I remember at the time being so naive and so, let's just call it arrogant because Mm -hmm. I really do feel like that's what it was. Um, Innocently arrogant. Innocently arrogant in the way that most young 20-somethings are. (laughs) Um, No offense to any 20-somethings who are listening. (laughs) We love you so much. Um, I... I used to kind of have this answer of, well, I just write when I'm inspired. Uh-huh. And I didn't ever talk about the discipline of sure. putting your butt in the chair mm-hmm. and doing the work. And now, you know, fast forward a decade and some later, I know that part of being a writer and part of being an artist is putting your butt in the chair and doing the work. It's mm-hmm. not just walking around all day, waiting until a muse knocks you on the forehead. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden you just crank out something beautiful in an effortless way. Like that is not, sometimes that actually does happen and it's Mm -hmm. wonderful. And we always celebrate when that happens. But if you're going to be a creative person and live a creative life, that is not by and large how it works all of the time. And so the odd thing is since this pandemic happened, I have really fallen back into that way where I sort of am just walking around in this house all day. And when I feel inspired, I sit down and I write the thing and I you know, I'm barely writing anything more than an Instagram caption at this point, maybe a couple of blog posts, but I sit down and I write when I want to, when Mm -hmm. I feel like it, when I have words swirling in my brain and I absolutely have to get them out, but I'm not, my disciplined writing practice, which was part of my life before this happened has completely gone out the window. And I've had to give myself just heaps of grace for that because I cannot walk around feeling guilty that I'm not waking up at 6am and writing first thing in the morning before I make breakfast for my family. Um, so it's been just kind of a weird flip flop in yeah. that way. And I, I know that this this way is not sustainable right. for me long term in my creative life or in my creative career. But right now in this pandemic, that is what I am leaning on. When yeah. I feel like I want to make something, I just go and make mm-hmm. it. And when I don't, I pop popcorn and I watch Netflix and it's fine. Yes. I mean, I I think there is so much good in what you just said, um, because I think we're living through something. First of all, no one's ever done this before. Mm -hmm. Um, And we are going to have a lot of processing that's going to happen in the coming months and even years. And so I am just all for taking the pressure off to, Mm -hmm. you know, as content creators, too, there can be pressure to remain relevant. That's something that, Mm -hmm. you know, Megan and I talk about all the time. Okay, we've got episodes coming up like we need to be helpful to people we want to. And like, For a few weeks there, it was like we couldn't record last minute enough to meet people where they were in their current situation because things were changing Changing so so fast. fast. And it is I just we both kind of had a little bit a moment where it felt very exhausting to try Mm -hmm. to um, serve our audience and our audience who's listening right now. We love them and trust them and had to kind of like take a step back ourselves and say, okay, like 
we're all going through this. It's not mm-hmm. Megan and Sarah's responsibility right. <laughs> to like have the wise words that everyone <laughs> needs to hear every Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Um, well, there's something also just so comforting in things that are familiar right now. Yeah. And I imagine that your listeners feel that way about your show. I yeah. know that that is feedback that April and I have gotten about our show right now is that just the familiar nature yeah. of our voices is comforting. And it doesn't matter if we're talking about the pandemic or right. talking about something else. And yeah. if anything, we've gotten tons of positive feedback about the fact that we continue to talk about other things yes. because people just need a break sometimes. Yes. You know, this is it is all over social media. It's all yeah. we're drinking from a fire hose every day, like every time we just turn on the computer or turn on the TV. And so I do think that you are probably providing them with exactly what they need, even if it doesn't always feel that way. Oh, well, I appreciate that. Um, and I'm just going to speak on behalf of all your listeners. Yeah, do you like you. how I just did I that? I do. I do. <laughs> thank you. They're all nodding their heads right now. Um, so in terms of creativity, I have noticed you doing little like free writes that are almost like mm. poetry on your Instagram. Is oh. that always something <laughs> that you have done? No, I really, I love it. Oh, thank um, you. Is that a always a form of writing that you have been drawn to or is it more a function of like literally like short lines and short groupings of words due to you know yes, like lack of time just, yes, yes. <laughs> due to not having the I was ability almost to write a poetry anything better major. I was almost oh, were you really? well I wasn't I was an English major and I studied a lot of poetry and I was accepted into the actual writing poetry program and then decided wow. I did not want to be a poet Okay. So, but I did. I almost was. I was almost a poet. So. Wow. Yeah. I yeah. can't imagine what a different life that would be for you. <laughs> I, mean, I, I think I prefer podcaster to poet. <laughs> but I love that. And and talk about that because it's a little bit different than maybe oh, a typical gosh. blog post. Or, yeah. yeah. I've just, you know what? I'm, I'm trying to experiment this year. That was actually a, a word that kept coming to me at the start of the year was experiment. I wanted to Um, just kind of practice a little bit more freedom Mm -hmm. in my own creative work. I think that sometimes, I don't know, I've been feeling a little bit restless, you know, Coffee and Crumbs is turning six this summer and I've had my personal blog for a really long time. And I think that sometimes we can just get in a rut and we almost can get to these places where we've put ourselves in a box for a really long time. And so this year I was really thinking about that in January. I just kind of want to mess around. I kind of want to try some new things and I've just given myself permission to do that this year. So I don't, there's no rhyme or reason. I don't know if any of it's any good. I just, I, when I have words in my brain, I sit down and I write them out and sometimes it comes out in short little snippets and vignettes. And sometimes it comes out kind of like a poem. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just going with it. So I really, I really (laughs) love it. And, um, Thank you. That's so kind. I admire it. So we'll um, maybe if yeah, we'll link up a couple. We'll definitely link up your Instagram. Um, But it's something that I think if you're looking, if you're listening to this and looking to add more just beauty and poetry into your Instagram feed, highly recommend Ashley Gad. Oh, you're so nice. Thank you. Sarah, when my kids were little, I was always pretty torn on whether to give them a daily multivitamin. I knew that modern kids' diets have some pretty big nutritional gaps, but I also knew that most children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with sugar, they have all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them, and I was like, why would I give these to my kids? Luckily, two dads recognized the problem and came up with a solution, Haya, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Your first shipment comes with a cute bottle that has fun stickers your kids can use to decorate it too. My kids always loved that. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash MomHour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Okay, so I have a very important. No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna go fluffy now. <laughs> we're gonna talk. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit lighter. Um, and I want to talk about home decor and shopping a little bit because mm. 
Um, I know you have talked about you, you guys bought your home and you talked a little bit about the beginning of the show that it's a smaller home. And I know you've been kind of uh, fixing it up is maybe the wrong word. Did you do a lot of actual no, it construction? Is, it is for sure a fixer upper. Yeah. Um, this, yeah, I could give you a photo for the show notes of what <laughs> okay. this house looked like before we came in here. Yeah, this is this is a fixer upper by anyone's definition. So we did a a lot of the heavy lifting before we moved in, okay. and now, um, yeah, we're mostly just kind of fixing up little things around the house. But our, I mean, our kitchen is a disaster. We desperately need a new roof. I mean, I've a lot of the projects that are in the queue now cost so much money that I just have no idea yeah. when we will ever be able to do them. So we're sort of sticking a lot of band-aids on a lot yeah. of things and just kind of doing the best we can as we're able to afford it. So. Well, and you're able to make your home a beautiful place. And that speaks, I think, to what we were talking about earlier, which is you are someone who is creative and you know, is an artist and makes things. And I think making spaces in your home beautiful is totally an extension of that. So I would love to know where do you get inspiration for pretty little corners of your home and oh where, like, where do you get ideas and where do you shop? Or is it just mm. like what, whatever strikes you? I feel so basic admitting this, okay. but I, <laughs> I just feel like I get most of my inspiration for my home from Pinterest, which is embarrassing. And no. also I actually don't even use Pinterest that much, but if I'm ever just kind of in the mood to escape for 10 minutes and go look at pretty things, that is where I go. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm the most active on Pinterest with home stuff. Yeah. So that's yeah. typically what I'm looking for, for ideas and those sorts of things. I love that. And then do you have, are you like a thrifter or like a, do you have a favorite place to shop? Are there local mm. places? Are you a target mama? I'm a pretty eclectic mix of all of those things. If you come into my house, you will see like something expensive from West Elm, which is like one thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then you'll see a lot of stuff from Target, um, some stuff from thrift stores. I love, I have probably maybe five or six stores that I kind of gravitate toward in terms of just style. If I'm looking for something, I just mm -hmm. assume that one of those stores would kind of carry the thing that I'm looking for in the style that I want it. Um, but yeah, we're pretty, I would say I'm a pretty good mix between like really thrifty finds mm -hmm. and um, usually with like light fixtures, almost all of our light fixtures in the house are from West Elm. It's okay. like the one thing that I'll spend money on is the light fixture. Um, but a lot of our other stuff is like more budget friendly. I would say that we lean more like budget items than not. Yeah. But I tend to just kind of know what I like and I just go for that. Go for it. Does your husband, is he involved in design and decor <laughs> decisions and installation? Oh, how much do I want to talk about this on this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Let me think for a second. No, I'm just kidding. We occasionally will come to a disagreement about something in the house. But I would say that nine times out of 10, I am the one who makes the decisions as far as the aesthetics of our home. And Brett just kind of goes along with it. Well, I know for us, so my husband is also, you know, home all of the time now. Mm -hmm. And his workload is actually lighter than he is working. He's not furloughed or anything like that. But He's just not able to do as much from home. So he he needs projects. So in terms of like home stuff, we're not going out to the stores, but I find myself since we're spending so much time at home, like maybe I'll mm. restyle the top of the piano and maybe yeah. I'm going to like redo the mantle. And then, you know, he will get involved mostly because he's bored. So I feel like we have done more mm, mm. projects is probably a strong word, just more puttering around the yes. house. And if this continues for, you know, many, many more weeks and months, I mean, home projects are going to be the new thing that couples do, right? Because you can get materials. Um, mm -hmm. You can order stuff online and we're all going to be YouTubing and teaching ourselves how to <laughs> like, in, like redo the bathroom. I don't know. I it's know. crazy. It's it crazy. has been a very good time to be puttering around. We have also been doing a lot of puttering, a lot of organizing, although all the donation centers are closed. Mm -hmm. So my entire garage is full of yeah. 
two months worth of me purging this house with nowhere to take it all. Yeah. We had to start parking the cars in the driveway because there is so much stuff in my garage that we I are just the same. need to dispose of. We that makes are. me feel better, oh, actually. Yeah. We are the same. <laughs> yep. No, there's no cars in the garage right now. And there used to be at least one. So. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, those poor those poor donation centers. Once this is over, I just think everyone is doing some rendition of that right now. Yeah, no kidding. Um, okay. So we've talked a lot about what you have been doing lately and how you've been creating, but, um, I would love to know what are you opting out of lately? What are you giving yourself a free pass on? Um, and I'm happy to answer this question as well. Cause I think moms, moms need to hear as much as possible what we are not doing, what we are mm. not showing on the, on the old Instagram. The so interwebs. <laughs> yeah. Does anything come to mind? Oh, man. A lot of things come to mind. I mean, I'm not really doing my laundry, but at some point I'm going to have to and it's going to be a day of reckoning. Let me tell you. Um, No, the biggest thing that kind of came to mind for this question is prior to this pandemic happening, I was working on two rather lofty creative projects. One I was working on completely in secret in private Mm -hmm. and one I was working on rather publicly and I have for the time being, just completely set those down. Mm -hmm. And I sort of had to, I just couldn't keep my business afloat and working on those extra endeavors with my children home 24 seven and no childcare. I just, I, I literally couldn't. And so I, I cannot even tell you the amount of stress that I physically felt leave my body Mm -hmm. when I just decided kind of out loud to myself and Mm -hmm. nobody else, I'm just going to put these on pause Mm -hmm. and I'm just going to set them down. And if, and when I get a fire in my belly for them again, I will pick them back Mm -hmm. up. But that time is not now. I cannot devote like another second of energy to these things right now because I don't have it in me. And so I don't know, that's it. They're they're pretty big things to be opting out of right now, to be honest. But at the same time, there technically was not an urgent timeline to them. Like I was pursuing them on my own with my own deadlines and my own timelines, all of which were self-inflicted. And so for me to be able to adjust that, it's hard for me mentally because I am such a a doer and a person who likes... Well, I was going to bring up the Enneagram. Now seems like an appropriate time to uh, share your number. hard time to be a three. It's a real hard time to be a three, you guys. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I saw one of those little Instagram memes about like, the way different numbers are Mm. working from home and I'm a one and ones and threes, I think overlap in some ways. And at least for the one, it was like, release yourself from the need to be as productive as you were before this. Yes. Um, And where I notice it coming up for me is I'm not quite as ambitious as I think a lot of threes are. I I, I don't take to, I don't tend to take on a lot of big, new, exciting projects, but I do hold myself to read ridiculously high standards for the things Mm. I am doing. Mm -hmm. And so that was a big reading. That was kind of like, Oh, like I can phone it in and it will still be Mm -hmm. good enough. That's a hard thing for a one. Um, So I think that's hard for me too. Sure. And I, I think um, ones and threes again, overlap a lot in, in those ways, Mm -hmm. Uh, um, maybe for different like underlying reasons or whatever, but there's a lot of overlap. So yeah, let like, opting out and letting go. I will say I have pretty much opted out of ever cooking dinner and I feel really good about it. <laughs> That's amazing. How are you eating? Because, That's amazing. Because I live with basically like a personal chef. Like my husband, oh, is, my he loves goodness. to cook and he's bored. So I am beyond lucky. You're, you are so hashtag blessed right now. I am I, very <laughs> hashtag blessed. I am not living that situation right now, yeah. but I desperately wish that I was. I thought you had some kind of magical like takeout no. fairy that delivered. Or just starving my family. <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, I think I think opting out or giving ourselves a pass is really important mm-hmm. right now. Again, Absolutely. because we're, we're in this for the long haul, I think. Um, Well, let's talk about Mother's Day. It's coming up in less than two weeks. And Mm -hmm. I have no earthly idea what Mother's Day is going to be like this year. I I cannot even... I think we're going to be with our children. (laughs) I mean, I think I can predict the future enough to know that my typical Mother's Day, which looks like going out with my friends, is probably not happening. (laughs) Well, okay. And let's dig into that a little because Mm -hmm. we have been talking to our community 
Um, I'm, I'm losing, I think it was last week, Megan and I did an episode where we talked about like four kind of fundamental needs that moms are really feeling right now. And, yeah. you know, one was kind of affirmation or feeling seen and appreciated. Yeah. Yeah. One was connection, which we certainly need with our, we're missing it with our friends. We might even be missing it with our partners, even if they're in the same house. Mm-hmm. Um, one was help. You know, a lot of us truly are missing the help yeah. that we had in the form yeah. of childcare. And one was alone time. Well, oh, it turns wow. out everybody wants alone time. I was actually surprised when we asked people to kind of weigh in on like, I mean, we all know everybody needs all four of those things, but which one felt like the most urgent need to people. And I thought we'd see a little bit more of a balance across the four and alone time, alone time. Everyone, everyone wow. needs it right now. Yeah. I believe it because yeah. let me tell you, it was it just last week that I, I went out and I sat in my car in my driveway <laughs> yeah. as a personal treat to myself. <laughs> so that's not even sounding so terrible. I will tell you that I ordered myself cinnamon rolls and flowers for Mother's Day. Nice. And I think I might just take both of those things into my car yes. and just sit in the driveway on Mother's Day. Yeah, it is. It is going to be so it's going to be hard, I think, this year for moms to, number one, functionally get alone time, mm-hmm. but also to be able to ask for it and to not feel guilty saying what I most want for Mother's Day mm. is to not see any of you people. And mm-hmm. um, I guess I, I know this is airing on May 1st, so we still have like a week and a half, everyone. Um, to just, I would just encourage everybody to accept that that's okay. If that's your biggest wish this year, and you may not get it in the form of like an entire spa day, but if you want to do the Ashley Gad and sit in your car (laughs) and listen to good music, like I just want every mom to feel like they can ask for that. That's my mother's day wish. And I think sometimes we feel guilty or we feel like that's, you know, like that's somehow not okay to ask for, um, So, yeah, I hope. I mean, I I don't know. I don't know what this says about me, but pretty much every year on my birthday and Mother's (laughs) Day, this is my request. When we are not in a pandemic, this is my request. Every year on my birthday, Brett takes a day off of work to watch the children or I arrange it on a weekend Uh and I spend a whole day by myself. That is literally what I ask for every single year on my birthday. So I don't think it's weird. And I think that, I mean, for Brett and I, I will tell you that a couple of the very serious kind of marital conversations we've had since this all went down have revolved around me feeling like I'm not alone enough. Mm -hmm. And it's been very hard. And Mm -hmm. it's just been, you know, how are you struggling? How can I help me asking him, him asking me? And my response every time has been, I just feel like I'm never alone. I'm not used to this. I'm not used to never being alone because when the kids were in school and the baby was napping, I was alone. I had built in time every day, Monday through Friday, where I was alone for an hour and a half to two hours. Mm -hmm. It's not a ton of time, but it was enough to reset me. Yep. And so I've been, I've been really open about that for the last few weeks with Brett that I'm really, I'm struggling with that lack of, it's like a lack of isolation. It's Mm -hmm. such a weird thing Mm -hmm. to, to be struggling with, but I am. And I think on mother's day, um, you know, I'm probably going to like go, go for a drive mm-hmm. by myself and I don't know, I might sit in my car, in my driveway. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. The po- <laughs> no, wait, they're not. They're not. It's no, a wait, very they're actually short very list. Very specific. <laughs> it's, a very, it's a very short list of things you could do. This is not the year of endless possibilities. Oh my no. gosh, that's so funny. But is there a pretty place where you, I'm actually going to do research on this in Sacramento because I don't know what this place is, but I'm just assuming it exists. I would like to drive somewhere pretty mm-hmm. and just park my car and just bring a book yeah. and bring an iced coffee and maybe a, another cinnamon roll, yeah. a second or third cinnamon roll for the day and just read a book yeah. it, looking at something pretty while drinking yeah. my coffee. I mean, does that not sound? It sounds wonderful. It sounds wonderful. And so far away from your home that you can't even hear the screams. <laughs> <laughs> That's the key. It can't be like that is at the, the end of the block. Yes. Um. <laughs> Well, the other side of this is the connection part we're missing with Mm. other moms. And I have always felt such a solidarity. I never thought before I had kids, I I always pictured Mother's Day as like, you know, it's about, you know, me and being honored as a mom. Mm -hmm. I never thought that it would feel like such a kind of a cheesy word, but like a sisterhood day. Like, you know, like you're you are kind of all being celebrated. We're all being celebrated collectively in different ways. And for some, it's you know, for some people it's kind of a hard day and others, it's just totally like a fun day, but we're all 
being celebrated on the same day. And that creates this kind of feeling of community. And I think that's something else people are missing right now. I would love for you to talk about the coffee and crumbs mother's day brunch, what you usually do and what you're doing this year. I'm still kind of sad about it, but it's okay. Okay. (laughs) So the last, we're making the best of this situation yes. and it's going to be, it's going to be good and I'm excited about it, but I'm still kind of just grieving the loss of what we've been able to do the last few years, which has been, um, we've sort of organized, it's a virtual brunch. So we, we basically give anyone who wants to sign up to host a brunch in their home with their friends. We try to take all of the mental labor okay. out of it. So okay. we pick the day. We pick the playlist. We pick the recipes. We make you a menu. We make you place cards. We make you pretty art that you can put down on the table. Um, We try to just kind of organize the organizing part because we all know as moms, like we're normally doing all of the organizing for all of the birthdays, the events, the anniversaries, the celebration. So this is kind of one thing where we wanted to take a little bit of the mental labor off of your shoulders and just help you throw this like really fun, amazing thing with your friends. We make an invitation for you to text them or email them. And then kind of just lay out, you know, we've done everything from the first year we did it. We did um, conversation starters, like fun questions to ask each other. I love the that. second year we did a photography. Ch- we did like a photo challenge. We gave everyone photo prompts and then asked people to share it on Instagram with a hashtag. And that was super fun to follow throughout the day. And it's been so fun watching this kind of develop over yeah. time in the last two years. It's so fun just being on Instagram on that day and mm-hmm. watching Everyone get together with their friends and kind of all do this, like you're saying, like this kind of sisterhood community event all at once. And so I'm so sad that we're not going to be able to do it in the same format this year. But um, rather than just throw in the towel, which I'm not going to lie, I was tempted to do Mm -hmm. because it's always a lot of work to pull all of this stuff together. I sort of had a talk with um, the main members of my team who participate in helping me get this off the ground. And we all kind of agreed that like people still need this. Like we still need community and fellowship with women. And if we can help play a small role in making it happen on Mother's Day weekends, like we should do that. So this year we're doing it 100% virtual. Mm -hmm. So we basically want moms to FaceTime, Zoom, Mm -hmm. Google Hangout, however you however you get together with your friends over the computer or over your phones to set up a time to do that. And then we still put together all of the resources. So we kind of modified, we tried to make things that like one of our recipes is um, coffee cake in a mug for one. Oh, cute. (laughs) So we kind of tried to be thoughtful and intentional with like what we were making. We still made a playlist, which we figured you could listen to while you bake. And so we still, the idea for this year is we want moms to basically show up with their friends virtually Mm -hmm. with literal coffee and literal crumbs. Like that's our theme for this year is just plain old coffee and crumbs. And um, yeah, we're just hoping that it will be a blessing to moms who participate. We're hoping that it just gives you an excuse to like plan something. Yes. I don't know about you, but for me, I feel like both my birthday and Mother's Day, it's kind of those days are kind of a hall pass for me. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I just ask for anything, (laughs) Brett usually says yes. So if I ask like, hey, You know, on this Saturday, we always do it on the Saturday before Mother's Day Mm -hmm. because we know Mother's Day is typically like a family day. So on May 9th, this is the day of the Coffee and Crumbs brunch. Is it cool if I lock myself in my bedroom for two hours alone with coffee and a scone? And that's going to be cool. And you got the kids outside, right? Like we're all on the same page. You know, he's going to say yes. Yeah, I love that. We're hoping that everybody else can um, be blessed by. (laughs) I love that. That Um, event. We will link it up in the show notes, of course. But is there an easy way? Do people just get it on the Coffee and Crumbs website? Yeah. And honestly, so previously in past years, we've sort of had it was kind of different because people were actually hosting this in their right. homes. So we had people sign up to be a host. Got it. But this year, everyone is a host mm-hmm. essentially for themselves in their own house. So everything is completely free. Like we don't even ask for your email that mm-hmm. you give us nothing. We are not asking for anything. This is simply a gift that Coffee and Crumbs wants to give to mothers on Mother's Day weekend. We have some super beautiful art. Um, Christine made us, she's our, um, our calligrapher slash art slash contributing artist. And she made us this really beautiful print that says in this together with a rainbow on oh, it. I and then she that. also made this really cool. It's, it's two halves of a rainbow. 
And the idea was we wanted friends to be able to print one side and then frame it and put it in their house to kind of remind them Uh that we're all in this together. So the day that I took pictures of everything, I put two of those in frames and I made little baskets for a couple of my friends and I went and just dropped them off on their porch with scones. And um, I don't know. I just I love the idea of still being able to put something beautiful out there for moms on Mother's Day weekend. And this was this yeah. was the best we could come up with this year. So I, I love that. So we will definitely link that up and there's plenty of time. So I hope everybody listening checks that out or considers that as a way to spend your day before Mother's Day, because we, we do deserve back to back days of alone yes, time. I think 100%, this, so yes. let's just this is a this, hall pass weekend. This is everyone. a Saturday, <laughs> Sunday event for sure. <laughs> Um, well, before we wrap, just speaking of coffee and crumbs, if uh, listeners or longtime followers probably noticed that there was a change this year, I would love for you to talk about um, what's new with the podcast and how you're doing the podcast and um, anything else you'd like to share about the coffee and crumbs community before we yeah. wrap up. Well, without going into just all the nitty gritty <laughs> details and backstory, um, we decided to simplify our podcast this year. Um, that's kind of just in a nutshell, the easiest way that I can say that. and. Our show, we had a great run for four years. It was super fun. And it was also a lot of work, as Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So in an effort to kind of simplify and scale scale back a little bit, we took our show exclusively into Patreon. So that is kind of how we're doing the format this year. And so far, it's working really well. You can access all of the content for as little as $1 a month. We tried to make it just easy and accessible yeah. and it's honestly working so well for us right now and especially in light of what 2020 has turned yeah. into like I am so grateful for that yeah. change because we just have so much more flexibility with our timeline and our schedule yeah. and our format and it's just been a huge blessing to me to be able to have that breathing room mm-hmm. this year of all years so yeah that's kind of what's that's going awesome. on with the podcast and um everything else is mostly business as usual. Yeah. So. And that is, if people aren't familiar, we'll link up um, the site, but you publish beautiful essays by writers, women writers all over the country on a regular basis. So um, wonderful writing. And I love your newsletter as well. So oh, there's lots you. of ways to, lots of ways to be connected to coffee. Yes. And crumbs. I will send you links to all of the important things Perfect. if anybody wants to check them out. And we also wrote a book a few years ago. Yes, I will give a you. tiny little plug for that. Totally. It's called The Magic of Motherhood, and you can, I think, still order it on Amazon as far as I know. Um, And it makes a great Mother's Day gift, especially for a new mom. So if you have any just new mom friends or baby showers that maybe aren't happening, this is such a great gift. You could just ship it straight to their house and I think that it would really bless them during this time I love that so that's the magic of motherhood um, and so we will link up the book as well well Ashley this was so much fun I'm so glad to have spent a little bit of my evening with you thank you friend this was a blast yeah so thank you for sharing with our audience and take care stay healthy stay safe up there and we'll talk soon you as well bye friend Thanks so much for listening, everyone. And hey, I have a favor to ask. We have gotten so many nice emails and comments about the episodes we've been putting out since the pandemic began. And we're so glad that they are kind of meeting you where you are with all of this. If you have been loving the podcast lately and you've never left us a review in Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen, that would be a big help right now. Your reviews right now will help other moms find the show and also help them see right away that this is a helpful resource during this time. And More Moms Listening to Us helps us grow our business and it helps us encourage more moms. So it's a win-win. Thanks so much, everybody. There is a link in the show notes on how to leave a review if you've never done it, and we so appreciate it. Coming up this Sunday, you'll hear the next episode in our Pandemic Perspective series, and then Megan and I will be back with you on Tuesday with another brand new episode. We'll talk to you then. Hi, friends. Megan here. I wanted to let you know about a new podcast I've just launched called The Teas Made. Think of it as a weekly cozy conversation with me over your favorite hot beverage on topics like wellness, creativity, family, hospitality, and more. Just look for The Teas Made with Megan Francis wherever you get your podcasts or head to theteasmade.com to find all those episodes. The Teas Made is your reminder to take a little break from the busyness of life. So come on in and get comfy. The Teas Made. The Mom Hour is brought to you by Partners Like Chatbooks. 
Chatbooks makes it beyond easy to create beautiful photo books by importing your digital photos from anywhere, Instagram, Facebook, Google Photos, or directly from your phone. The books come in a variety of sizes with beautiful cover options and binding styles to choose from, and they start at just $15. Plus, we have a great deal just for our listeners. Use code THEMOMHOUR20 to save 20% off your purchase. Just download the Chatbooks app and use code THEMOMHOUR20 to save 20%. 